Welcome to another edition of The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality with me, your host, Pastor Kevin Treasure, a.k.a. The Winner's Mentality, helping you win in life with the power of your words. And today I was just been meditating on, on the abundant life after I prayed and I was just, just meditating on the word. It's like the Lord impressed upon me, John 10.10, 10, and it's such a remarkable scripture. God, Jesus made such a remarkable statement in John 10.10. 10. He said, the thief cometh not. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. He said, Jesus has come. He said, the devil, he's the thief. He's the, I don't care what anyone says. People may argue I, I, the devil is the thief. He's the one that comes to kill, steal and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come. He's made it clear why he has come. He made it so profoundly clear. I have come that you may have it life and have it more abundantly and i was just meditating on what that looks like what does that abundant life really look like and i was looking around in christian christendom and i said where i see wherever i go i see some success here and there i see people doing great things for the lord people building his kingdom but a majority of christianity i don't see people living that abundant life and i believe there's many people at the sound of my voice you you want that abundant life god saved you he turned you around he's forgiven you of your sin you've accepted him into your heart and you know that there's more for you i'm speaking to people that know that there's more for them that they're hungry and they're thirsting for more and they say god surely there must be more to this is going to work paying the bills going to church but you're saying god surely there must be more to this christian life that i'm living and god is saying yes there is there is much more jesus wants to give us that abundant life and i believe that abundant life is when we immerse ourselves in the plan of god in the assignment of god and the will of god i believe that's when we'll start to see the abundant life that jesus christ promised us i believe that's when we'll really see the goodness of God. We'll see God's miracle working power. We'll see God's hand in everything we do when we immerse ourselves in the will of God. So we got to really go back to the beginning. And, and I started looking at the life of some of the disciples. And I'm going back to Matthew 16, 25. And Peter made that profound statement. There's that word again, profound. It was a profound statement. It was a revelation. He said, ask him, who, who do men say that I am? I mean, I know what, but and then he said, well, who do you say I am? And Peter spoke up. It's good to speak up, amen. Some people are afraid to get it wrong, but Peter had a revelation. Peter had a revelation. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, blessed art thou, Simon by John, because flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven, as we know, he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. But then he went on to tell them, listen, I'm going to suffer many things and be handed over. And they didn't understand. And then Peter, who had the revelation, is now turning around and thinks he's got the authority to rebuke Jesus or, or correct Jesus. And Jesus rebuked him and said, no, no, no. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. You're an offense. You're an offense to the plan of God. And then Jesus says in verse 24, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And this is where I'm going. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. So I believe that God is looking for some people that are willing to lose their life and lose their life. When he say lose their life, he's saying lose their life in him. Lose their life in his plan, in his purpose. Lose everything. Lose sight of what you want and start having taking hold on what god wants for your life just lose your life lose yourself in him lose yourself in the assignment he has for you some of you are called to be preachers some of you are called to be great evangelists some of you are called to affect cities and nations and communities or men or women or young people god has his hand on your life and some of you you know it you know it. you feel it in your belly that god has his hand on your life but you're saying god i want to see more but there's a letting go and as I speak to you I'm speaking to myself I believe that there's coming a time in 2023 that there's gonna have to be a letting go of ourselves so we can really see this abundant life that Jesus Christ promised us and every single one of his disciples when I look in their lives I'll go in a few of them when Jesus began his ministry he chose out 12 men that he would call disciples who would go on to be apostles 12 ordinary men from different backgrounds and then 
different spheres of life, different education. Some fishermen, as we know, he called tax collectors, zealots, him and he, he called 12 different men, totally different men with totally different characters. But they had to give up their life. They had to give up what they held dear to themselves so they can take on what Jesus has for them. And I believe that those 12 men made the best decision, those 11, as we know, made the best decision that they ever made. And as we see, Matthew was sitting at the receipt of custom when Jesus took, called him. He was there and he was making a good living. And there's some of you, you're making a good living. You're doing okay. I mean, you, you got your house paid. I mean, you got, you're paying your mortgage, got your car, your wife, your kids. You're doing okay. Your money's not an issue for you. But you know that there's more for you. And some of you, I'm not saying that you're a tax collector, but some of you, you're saying, God, there's more. I'm making money and I'm doing okay and I'm comfortable. But Nehemiah was comfortable. But when he heard that the broken walls of Jerusalem had been broken down, he said, no, I need to get uncomfortable. I need to do something. And there's some of you, you're comfortable, but you're saying when souls are going to hell and there's more that I can be doing, you're saying, God, there's more that I could be doing. And Matthew just heard him say, follow me. He just heard the master say, follow me. And he left all. I truly believe that Matthew was searching in his heart. Matthew was fed up of working for the Romans. Fed up of being hated by his fellow countrymen. And I believe that there was a struggle going on in Matthew. And Jesus saw that struggle. And Jesus is seeing that struggle that is going on in the lives of so many people. And he's saying, follow me. But don't follow me halfway. Don't follow me 30% or 75%. Jesus is saying, follow me. He's saying, follow me totally. Give up all. Matthew left all. And he followed Jesus. Matthew was a sinner. He was a publican. He was a, he was a tax collector. When Jesus went to have a feast in his house, the, the, the Pharisees were upset that he went to eat with publicans and sinners. But Matthew accepted the call. And many at the sound of my voice, you want to accept the call. You know that Jesus is calling you. You know that he has a plan for your life. But you're saying, can I let go? And God is saying, this is the year that you let go and you let God. This is the year that you want to see my hand in your life. You want to see the miracles. You want to see the power of God. You want to see my provision. You want to see what I can do with your finances. Do you want to see what I can do with your life? He's saying, this is the year that you're going to let go and you're going to let God. In Luke 5, we know the story of Peter and Peter and his brother and they were fishermen and the Bible says that the other fishermen had gone out and he chose their boat and he told them to thrust out a little bit so he can teach I'd love to hear what he was teaching and what I love when I get to heaven I say God I, I'm, I want a replay of all what I read in the book I, I want a replay I want to see it I want to see it and he thrust out a little and he began to teach from the boat and after he had finished teaching he now tells Peter and his brother said thrust out launch out into the deep and that is a message in itself. He's saying, listen, after I've taught and many of you have heard the word of God and you're hearing God speak and he's telling you to launch out into the deep, launch out into the place where no one else will dare to go for God. Launch out into the deep where there's so much in store for you that when you do put your net in, you're going to see things you've never seen before. I believe he's telling many people, you want the abundant life? You're going to need to launch out into the deep. We we'll listen to the deep waters and he said, but it's the middle of the day, it's hot and we've been laboring all night and we've caught nothing and many of you are giving God excuses and we might be saying but God I've got my mortgage and God what about my job and God what about my security and God what should I do and God and God and God and God is saying I'm God I know all the questions all the answers to your questions in fact I know what your what's in your heart and what's even going on in your mind God is saying I know and I've got all the answers but I love Peter's answer he said nevertheless so after all our excuses and after all our arguments and after all our what could be and maybe and how and why and all these questions after every argument that we may present to God Peter says nevertheless at your word if you've called me for this I'm going to do it and I believe that God the sound of my voice many of you God has called you for such a time as this this is the time the world is dark and gross darkness to people but the light is going to rise and shine on you the light is going to shine in you and through you you are that city that's set on the hill you are the light you are the soul he said nevertheless at thy word because you've said so i'm going to launch out into the deep and he said he thrust out his net and the bible says he got a haul of fish and the bible says that he had to ask for his, 
his friends Andrew and uh, Andrew and no P, um, James and John to come and help them and the Bible says that the catch caused their boats to start sinking that was one heck of a catch and the Bible says because of what Peter said he said oh my god I, depart from me I'm a sinful man why did he say that because he didn't believe he didn't believe I mean, he didn't believe he, he threw his nets out but he, he threw his nets out in doubt that's why he came and said oh my god depart from I'm, I'm a sinful man I, I'm, I'm a mess I, I didn't believe I'm a sinful man I, I'm a non-believer but Jesus looked at him and turned around and he said don't worry from henceforth you're going to catch men and I believe that many of you have been doing some great work in your jobs and in your field that you're called to do but I believe that God has called many of you to catch men. God has called many of you to affect your generation. God has called many of you to do great miracle signs and wonders, to do things never seen before. God has called you as pioneers and game changers. God has called you as trendsetters. God has called you to affect your generation in a supernatural way. God has called you for such a time as this. And he said, listen, he left all. They left all. He said there was a new task ahead. They left all, not knowing what would be, but they knew that they were going to catch men they didn't know how but they were willing to learn from the master they knew that this was the chosen one which is the one they'd been waiting for and many of you have been waiting and we've been waiting when the messiah has come and he's now waiting on you and he's saying are you ready to take on the task and i'm trusting you, i'm encouraging myself as i'm encouraging you and he's saying are you ready to take up the task to ready you to do what i've called you to do ready to walk into the plan of god for your life and i don't care how old you are some of you may be 30 40 60 or some of you may be even 75 listen moses started ministry at 80 i don't know anybody but moses that started ministry at 80 but the ministry that he did have people are still talking about it today so will you let go and will you let God? Simon was a zealot. That's like a little Jewish terrorist. He, he was he was a wild man, man. He was he was he was gung ho for his cause. And God is calling some people like Apostle Paul, who was formerly called Saul of Tarsus, and he knew that he was gung ho for religion, for a Pharisee, a Pharisee. He knew that he was he was determined in what he did. And God is gonna get ready to turn around some people that are in the wrong field or doing the wrong thing with the wrong mindset, but he knows that they, they really mean well and they really they think they're doing the right thing and i believe god is going to save some muslims he's going to save some hindus he's going to save some buddhists he's going to save some people from different religions that really believe they're doing right but when they get hold of the truth and the love of god demonstrated for his son christ jesus they're going to be on fire for god and they're going to put to shame some christians that have been sitting in church for 10 15 20 years because they're going to do what god told them to do and they're going to do it with zeal and fire and determination will that one be you Nathaniel was chilling, I'd say chilling, he was sitting under the fig tree when Philip informed him, he said, listen, we found a Messiah, he's from Nazareth, <laughs> and, Philip, and Nathaniel simply says, I mean, can anything good come out of Nazareth, so when he brings him, Jesus gives him one simple word of knowledge, just one simple word of knowledge, just one word of knowledge, just, that's all that grabs Nathaniel's attention, and he said, surely thou art the Christ, and he said, because I saw you sitting under the fig tree, he said, listen, he promised him, listen, you're going to see greater things than this. You're going to see the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus is that ladder. Amen. Set down on the earth to heaven. Amen. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. He said, listen, the family, you're going to see much more than this. And those 12 men, they saw much more than this. They had their lives, but there was more. They each took a step of faith to follow Jesus. Each one of them said, I'm going to leave all I've got. And I'm going to follow you. I'm going to take this step of faith because I've seen something different. It's, you're not like the other religious leaders. You're not like the other teachers. And Jesus is not like any other teacher. He's given you the Holy Spirit. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is beckoning many people to follow me this year. Follow me this year. I've got something for you that you didn't, you didn't accept last year or the year before. But this is the year that you're going to see the abundant life. And Matthew may have had a good life. And the boys, Peter... Andrew, James and John, they had a great little fishing business, little family business because the sons of Zebedee, amen, came to know as the sons of Thunder. They had a good business. Matthew certainly had a good business. But I believe when they left all, they never knew what they were going to see when they walked to Jesus. And they never knew what they were going to receive after Jesus had died and rose again. And as they began to walk of the master, they saw the blind eyes open. They saw the deaf ears, deaf ears become unstopped. They come, saw the mute 
speak, they saw the lame walk, they saw the dead raised, leprosy totally cleansed, they saw miracles, signs and wonders, they saw even his shadow and they're casting out people who were, who were lame and people whose limbs had been cut off and limbs growing back, they saw miracles never seen before and I'm sure if they was in their 9 to 5, no matter how much money they may have been making, they would have never seen what they had seen, they had left all and they began to live the abundant life and Jesus said to them, when I send them, listen I'm sending you with no money and I'm sending you with only one coat, <laughs> Listen to me, I'm sending you with one coat, no money. Go and whoever's house you enter in, listen to me, you're gonna listen. A workman is worthy of his hire. He said, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look after you. In the closing chapter, I believe it's John or Matthew is no, I believe it's John. And he says, Listen, when I sent you out, did did you lack anything? And he simply said, No. So what is Jesus is saying? When I do send you out, when you go walk into this abundant life, you're not gonna lack any good thing. You're not going to lack when you, when you say yes to this abundant life. You're not going to lack any good thing. They saw things that no one had experienced before. They experienced the promise of the Father when Jesus died. And, and they were so heartbroken. Closed up behind closed doors. Hiding for fear of the Jews. And Jesus appeared before them. Amen. Upbraided them. And he stayed another 40 days with them. Showing them infallible proofs that he is the Son of God. And then they saw him be taken up and they went into the upper room and they stayed 10 days waiting for something, not knowing what they're going to receive. But they knew Jesus had made a promise and Jesus has made a promise. And on a day, that fateful day when Pentecost had fully come, the Holy Spirit fell on each and every one of them. 120 men and women praying, believing God, seeking God, amen, calling upon the Lord. And the Holy Ghost fell on such a day, a paramount, amen, where all Jews from all over, amen, proselytes, all kind of people coming amen to worship on the day of pentecost and they spoke their language the, what did they speak the wonderful works of god i believe that when we accept this abundant life that jesus has for us we're going to speak the wonderful works of god jesus is calling someone someone at the sound of my voice and say i know this is for me i know this is for me but i'm scared to step out i'm scared to do what i know what god is calling me to do and i'm telling you i'm right there with you because i believe that this is a paramount year that we're going to see god like we've never seen him before but it's going to take a step of faith the bible says that uh, there was a young rich ruler and he was rich so i want to speak to some rich people there are rich people out there at the sound of my voice and you know that there's more you've got swimming pools cars you've got houses you're rich you've got all that you could ever desire you can buy what you want when you want and you don't need to borrow but you know that there's more there's more in you there's more you're saying there's surely there must be more because you're still not satisfied and i tell people there's a part in every human being that only god can fulfill that only god can satisfy and it doesn't matter how much sex drugs and rock and roll it doesn't matter how, how much money you have there's a part in every human being that only God can feel that only God can satisfy and he came to Jesus and said what can I do that I may inherit eternal life and Jesus said you know the commandments amen and Jesus and he said yeah all these things I've done as a youth so now he's, he's, he's almost justifying himself but Jesus knows the heart and Jesus said this one more thing just this one thing and one version said Jesus looked on him and loved him and Jesus said to him sell all that you have give it to the poor and come follow me and you'll have riches in heaven now Matthew could do it I believe Zacchaeus who who, who, who he stood up and Jesus didn't need to tell him this he said anybody I've taken by unjust gains I'm going to restore back to him four times he knew he had met Jesus Zacchaeus in a way that he said listen I'm giving back I, if I've done wrong I'm giving back I'm, I'll give you more than what I took but it's you rich young ruler had money at the heart. His heart was his heart was for the money. The money was his security. And Jesus was saying, make me my security. And the Bible says he went away very sorrowful. But Jesus had an abundant life waiting for him. And Jesus has an abundant life waiting for many of us. We're not going to be like the rich young ruler. We're not going to go away sorrowful. But we're going to accept the call. And we're going to rejoice and have joy. And then to know that God is with us and know that we're going to do what God has called us to do. So at the end of this life, we can hear, well done, our great, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. They experienced the Holy Spirit. Amen. They went around preaching the good news of miracles and signs following. Amen. They were accused of turning the world upside down. But it took a step of faith. 
in response to the master. They were accused. These just 12 simple men. I remember came 11, of course. But these simple men were accused of turning the world upside down. Why? Because they went everywhere preaching the gospel. And Jesus said, confirming the words with miracles, signs following. Amen. And I believe many of you are asking, I need this abundant life. And when people hear abundant life, people think finances. Listen, there's rich people out there that are jumping off buildings because they're still not happy. They're addiction, they're in all kinds of problems and they're, they're worried about this. They have anxiety, their marriages are wrecked. There's all kinds of money. Doesn't, money can pay the bills, but money can never be your source of true happiness. The only source of true joy is having a relationship with Jesus Christ. So that's where the abundant life comes in. When you walk out God's plan for your life and it's going to take faith. What does that abundant life look like? It looks like saying yes to his plan, yes to his will. That abundant life is saying no to what, what I wanted, no to my desires and saying yes. Because there's that initial yes where we say yes, I, I repent of my sin and when I put my trust in Jesus, I'm saved. And as we begin to walk of the Lord, now there is more. We're saying, God, I want your plan. God, I want your will. I want your will for my life. They turn the world upside down. And I believe there are people at the sound of my voice whom God is inviting to experience that abundant life. A life of the supernatural. A life of the miraculous. A life that can only come through having a relationship with Christ Jesus and doing what he's called you to do. Moses was herding the sheep of Jephro. It wasn't even his own flock, but he was faithful. He was tending to his father-in-law's flock when God called him. David was tending to his father's flock. It wasn't even his flock, but he was faithful in another man's and God gave him his own. And many of you at the sound of my voice, you've been faithful in another man's and God's saying, I'm about to give you your own. But you're going to need to take a step of faith. There's many people, they want to see the abundant life like Gideon, he, Gideon the angel came to him and he said, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And the first thing Gideon says is, if the Lord is with us, if the Lord is, is really with us, where be all the miracles that we heard about? Where, where be all the signs? Where be all the miracles? And some of you are saying, where be all the miracles that I'm reading about? And God is saying, if you just step into the river, step into the flow, step, in to the, step into what I have for you. If you just step in, you're going to see me like you've never seen me before. He's going to use you as his mouthpiece, amen, as his instrument to heal a broken world. God wants to use you, amen. He wants to use you in ways that you've never thought or imagined. Because the Bible says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that is working within us. And there's a power working in you, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit. And many of you are saying, I want to see this abundant life. I've heard it preached, I've read about it, I've heard about it, men have spoken about it, some people are living it, some people are reading it, some people are saying all kinds of things about it, but you're saying, I want to experience this abundant life. I want to see what God has for me. I want to fulfill everything written about me in the books. There's some books written about you in heaven, amen, and you were born and you're ordained to do some stuff amen and you're not doing it but this is the year that you begin to do what God has called you to do this is the year that you experience the abundant life I believe Apostle Saul of Tarsus was doing all kind of things and he was doing it with zeal but when he met Jesus listen to me he lived that abundant life he saw miracles signs wonders everywhere he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ riots he was beaten he was hurt but he counted it all joy I said he counted it all all joy. He said he rejoiced in necessities, in reproaches. Because <laughs> when I'm weak, that's when he's strong. He said he rejoiced in necessities, in reproaches. What a relationship this man had with the living Savior. He rejoiced in these things. He joy, took joy. He wrote some of the greatest epistles from prison. Amen. Makarabasante. He wrote some of the greatest epistles from a prison cell. And it wasn't like the prisons that we have now. Amen. He was lonely. It was dark. It was damp. But he wrote some of the greatest epistles that are affecting this world and the generations to come even now. Made up of the canons called the 66 books of the Bible. Why? Because he was living the abundant life. He counted it all joy. 
And I believe that when we accept this abundant life, no matter what we go through, and man, no matter hardships, no matter what it looks like, in the face of persecution, in this dark and dying world, in the face of persecution, where so much hatred is growing, and so much wrongdoing, and so much evil, and when Christianity is being persecuted, and so many people are having a desire to do opposite of what God has called them to do, I believe in the face of all that, we're still going to have joy. Why? Because we know that we're living the abundant life. We know that we're living the life that God has ordained for us. And we're going to have joy. So 2023 isn't going to end the year 2022 ended. This is the year that you step into the abundant life. This is the year you see God like you've never seen him before. You were born for this. I want you to look in the mirror or look at someone as you're listening to this and say, I was born for this. I was born for this. You was born for the abundant life. Many think the abundant life is just about driving a nice car, looking real good, or, or wearing nice clothes, a nice watch and a Rolex. Uh, please, come on. Those are material things. The Bible says, I'm going to give you, if you leave all, I'm going to give you all houses and lands and all these things with persecution. <laughs> Don't leave that out. But in the life to come, eternal life. Those, 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 are, those are material things. God wants to give us so much more. So God is saying, Give yourself away to me this year. Give, just give yourself away to me. There are many of you who have been struggling and saying, God, I know that I've called for more. And God is saying, I want to give you the abundant life. I want to give you the John 10, 10 experience. I want to give it to you. You deserve it. This is what you've been asking for. I'm going to give you this John 10, 10 life that you've been crying out for, that you've been asking God for. The Bible says the thief comes, but to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly he says might so the choice is up to us and man there's a choice that we've got to make he said it's up to us that they might it's not going to be a might we're going to receive this abundant life we're going to walk in it we're going to do what god has called us to do amen and we're going to hear well done oh good and faithful servant there's a dying world out there and god has called us to be light and salt god has called us to be the city that is set on the hill and we're about to do exploits for Jesus. The Bible said, those that know their God shall be strong and do exploits for him. So I look forward to what God is about to do in your life this year. Please share it with me. And then you can email me info at decisionsdeterminedestiny.com. You can jump on my website, www.kevintreasure.com. Reach out to me. Let me know of the great things that God is doing in your life as you step by faith. I know there's many storms going out, there's storms going all over, there's economic financial storms, recession and all kinds of things that are taking place. But the Bible says in the midst of the storm and the disciples, Jesus was there walking on the storm, walking on the midst of the waves. And when Peter said, if it's you, bid me to come. And Jesus gave him one word. He said, come. And Jesus done, Peter done what nobody else has done. And nobody else will ever do, I believe. No matter how much they try. Only Jesus and Peter have ever done this. They walked on water. But keep your eyes on Jesus. As you step out on faith, keep your eyes on the Lord. To live this abundant life. To see the miraculous. The signs and the wonders. To see the supernatural. And his hand on your life like never before. We're going to have to keep our eyes on Jesus. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. I feel it burning in your belly that you was born for this. You're going to live the life that God has for you. This has been me, Kevin Treasure, a.k.a. The Winner's Mentality, helping you win with your words. Be blessed. Live the life that God has called you to live. In Jesus' name, amen.